Okay guys, so a new chapter in my Rodin and Starship Coil research um, and that would be pulse motors. I finally um, got some magnets. Uh, someone has donated some magnets and you know who you are and I greatly appreciate it. Um, it would probably take me months and months to get some magnets. Um, money is very very tight so uh, again you know you are and greatly appreciate it. Um, I have a uh, half inch, a quarter inch, and an inch Neo sphere. I believe they're 42 in, and also one cylinder magnet uh, that is three quarters uh, with a quarter inch uh, hole. I've got I've got bearings and bearings and bearings and more bearings, like small type bearings. I mean, I just they're everywhere. I got them out of hard drives and such, and they're all uh, metric, <laughs> and that's standard. So I'm working on some bearings for that. Okay, so what I'd like to show you is a couple of things. What I've learned so far, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do. Um, as you can see, I've taken apart a few, um, just a few fans um, out of PCs. And they have hall sensors in them. Now they have different type of hall sensors. They're all set up different. Uh, the particular one that I got out of... A certain fan motor is just a, uh, oh, a three prong, a positive and negative, and your signal out. Um, the signal is high and then goes low whenever you uh, whenever it senses something or the uh, north or south side of a magnet. Now other fans have uh, this very tiny hall sensor chip, which has actually got four prongs. Um, it's actually got two signal outputs a high and a low and they're opposite on on or off when they're running um, a couple more here I plan on doing some other things but I just wanted to show you right now um, the original pulse motor and uh, I'll quit talking put you guys on the tripod and show you uh, right now I'm using uh, Jack I don't know how to say your net last name Jack but uh, look him up here's the schematic it's on uh, the rodent coil uh, groups on Google that's where I got it from very very simple. I do not have the um, uh, the neo or sorry the neon or the uh, rectifying diode, and I don't even have protection across my MOSFET right now. Too bad. Uh, it's not like I don't have a few laying around. <laughs> Recycled electronics, love it. So um, basically, this transistor is getting pulsed uh, from the high to the low because this uh, sensor is always low, or I'm sorry, always high, and it goes low. And then this basically inverts it so that I can run my MOSFET. My MOSFET actually is what I'm using. I'm using a battery, 12 volt power source. And uh, that's it. So I got the one inch Neo in here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this thing up and show you guys. It's uh, pretty sweet. Okay, here we go. Uh, power it up here with the battery. It's on now. Get my hall sensor in here. Um, everybody uses glass, but I hear uh, people wearing out their see it's sticking to it. People wearing out their magnets, so I tried some plastic here and put some lubricant in there. It's actually pretty good. Get it going for you here. It cruises. Oh. So it don't go flying. Break something. If I get it just right, I can really pick up some speed here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect power. You can hear it spinning down, so uh Jack's crazy experiments with his uh, low low resonator resonance stuff going on is pretty sweet. I'm not really getting any of that. As you can tell, it's running, but uh, I don't think it has anything to do with resonance. It's just spinning that fast. So, there you go. Um, I'll hook it back up real quick.
see if you guys can see the way the magnet's sitting there. I can see it. Uh, can't really see it. But it's actually, the axis is on the top and bottom. It's spinning like this direction. That's why it's free spinning so well. Uh, yeah, that, that lubricant made a heck of a... Just... Uh, makes it nice. I'll show you what I got. I got this some of this uh, heavy duty silicone. I use this for my Rubik's cubes. <laughs> Works pretty sweet. So that's what I'm using. Okay now what I want to tell you guys and show you guys and explain what I would like to do with a pulse motor um, is right now everybody's got that I've seen everybody's got a hall sensor and a single circuit. Now basically what that means is whenever the north or the south I don't know which one it senses passes the sensor it turns on the MOSFET the transistor then the MOSFET now uh, basically what you're what you're doing is you're pulsing it um, one time and the magnet has to travel all the way around to get to the next cycle so basically the north hits south cycles all by itself then the north hits again it gets power cycles all the way around north again and continues to do that now what I would like to do is build a pulse motor with both the north uh, and the south triggering the coil. So basically the coil would reverse polarity. Now this particular coil I'm just using it because I have it. Um, it's only got one wind. Next I'm going to show you this coil which is another Starship coil that I have hot glued. Uh, if anybody ha have not seen this yet it's pretty interesting. Um, as you can tell, I spent quite a bit of time on this. Uh, you can see how nice it is inside there. So, I'm going to show you that next. I'm going to show you that I can take um, a, a fan circuit, unmodified, hook it up to a Roden, or a, yeah, a Starship coil or a Roden coil, either one, that has two windings. So, I'm going to put that on another video because I'd like to call it something different. So, here we go. Um, that's all I got for you. Let me know. Peace out.